You're listening to Deliberate Living, the podcast that inspires, empowers, and encourages listeners to live life more authentically. My name is Holly Priestley, and I'm a nomad, coach, creator, and outdoors woman. And I'm Beers, a vagabond, joy artist, permissionary, and story breaker. We explore different ways people choose to ditch the prescribed life we've all been sold and live on their terms. Finding freedom and happiness however they choose. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Deliberate Living Podcast. I am your host, Holly Priestley. And I am, one last time, your co-host, Nathan Beers. (laughs) And this week, Beers and I have a little bit of a surprise for you. Uh, We have decided mutually that uh, moving forward, I will go back to being the only host of the show. (laughs) And so this is going to be Beer's last uh, last official co-hosting episode. I imagine he will be on the show again in the future to talk about other things, but not in as regular a capacity as he has been for the last four or five months. So this week, we're going to use this opportunity to talk about mindful endings, how to quit something, uh, how to look at and maybe redefine failure, how to decide if something is complete, if something has run its course. Um, And we're going to talk about that through the lens of, you know, being deliberate about it and being intentional about it, because things coming to an end, whether we want them to or not, whether we think it's the right thing or the wrong thing or somewhere in the middle, uh, it can be hard like really hard emotionally physically logistically oh yeah um and so we want to maybe you know give some guidance on how to decide like is it time to end x thing or is it time to you know buckle down and keep doing x thing and um i i think we both have some uh, some experience in this area <laughs> we've got plenty of tips nope. um and guidelines to share with you guys today so um beers why don't you start us off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was um, it was so interesting. I actually spent a fair amount of time preparing for this I conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I waited until the last one to mm-hmm. uh, to prepare in advance, mm-hmm. um, but it. I went back to look at some things I've written on this topic in the past, and springtime what is it about springtime and like endings and transitions and whatnot it's um we, we've joked about this in the past but i had been a guest on this podcast uh twice before i joined as co-host and each of those times just after the it was either recorded or released my situations uh, shifted pretty substantially, and uh, in both times, it was it was a partnership that I had that uh, came to a came to a close, and I wrote quite a bit about the pain, but also the intentionality behind. Indians. And uh, as as I have over the last few years been developing more of this uh, idea around story breaking, it was fascinating to see seeds of that in what I was writing about uh, stories being different. And because the stories were different, uh, because we couldn't find that shared story that we were both just really alive about it we realized that it was time to go and find and write other stories and and i feel like that's that's a similar situation here where uh i i loved the idea of being co-host and there was a lot about it that i felt really alive about and there were other parts of it where i don't know a lot of the topics that i feel drawn to are maybe a little bit more esoteric than than what what we're going for with this uh with this podcast audience um the frequency my my new living situation and just not having 
an easy time at all trying to create an environment where I have good internet and a quiet space to be able to record in um, uh, the frequency, all of these things, just it became increasingly clear to us both that it, that this, this wasn't the good fit, uh, the best fit at the, at the best time. And yeah, and it's your baby. And I am so excited <laughs> for, for you to have your baby back in just your own arms for you to <laughs> do with it what, what you desire. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, I mean, I am too. I have really enjoyed the process of having a co-host for the last few months. Um, it's been something that is very different. I never would have considered it. Um, and so when you suggested, hey, why don't I co-host with you? I was kind of like, I don't know about that. And then I was like, let's <laughs> lean into it and like see what that's about. Because I do want to foster more um, interdependence in my life. I'm a very independent person. And that's great and wonderful and better than dependence, in my particular opinion. Yeah. Um, and according to a lot of the books I read, but <laughs> that's a topic for a whole nother day. Um, but interdependence, interdependence has been something I have been uh, wanting to focus on in the last you know year or so. And so when you suggested co-hosting, I was like, okay, this is an opportunity to kind of lean into that and learn about that and see if, you know, uh, one plus one can equal three. If we can make more from having, you know, an extra set of hands. And I think that it has been, you know, a, a wonderful opportunity, a great experience, um, a lot of lessons, a lot of learning, a lot of letting go because it is my baby and it is something yeah. that I hold very closely. And I have a lot of ways that I do it <laughs> and teaching somebody else, my systems and stuff. That was a learning process. Um, and I, overall, I think it has all been, been really excellent, but the podcast in general for me has been, uh, an ever evolving project ever since the beginning, you know, over two years ago now. Right. Um, and I've had plenty of times over the last two years where I've asked myself, do I need to keep doing this? Should I keep doing this? Is the podcast the right thing to put my energies into, or do I need to step away? Do I need to bring this thing to a completion? Um, and you know, so I could definitely talk about my decisions and, and how I process all of that. Um, but I'm curious about, you know, if you have any, um, any tips or any uh, guidance for the audience in terms of like mindful ending from your perspective. You know, this morning I was, I was reflecting on this and I used to really struggle a lot with the idea of holding things loosely because I, I like to love big. I like to do things big. And those two things for a long time to me felt mutually exclusive. And I think I've come to learn that I can both love big. I can do things big. I can give my heart to things and also hold on to the story of that loosely so that that story is able to shift and to change. And it's not, uh, and it's not without pain. It's not without, uh, it's not without hard feelings. The, the big feelings are, are a big part of it. Uh, a year ago, I, when a partner and I were going through a, a, a changing of directions, uh, I made a post where I really leaned into my grief. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend this as the best option, but I intentionally, uh, I intentionally took a bottle of tequila. And I drank a lot of that tequila and it wasn't to drown out my feelings. It was to intentionally create a space to release them. And I released them big and I wailed and I cried because there was a story that I had wanted 
and that wasn't going to be the story and and it hurt to let that go and to shift but i was able to let it go and i was able to shift it and here the next spring i'm in a very different place and i am loving where i'm at so much and i'm also able to i feel be so in so invested in what i'm doing right now in life and also increasingly just holding it with a light hand that knowing that yeah things things might shift right now this is beautiful and i am loving what is right now and next month six months from now next april <laughs> oh man who, who knows, knows? <laughs> i know who knows what i'll be letting go of uh next april but it's yeah. yeah for for me i think it's really just about learning learning that balance uh of simultaneously loving big doing big and holding loosely yeah I think it would be interesting um, now listening to you talk about that. Uh, most of the tips that I have for our listeners today revolve kind of around like solo decisions, right? Like, do I want to keep doing this one creative project that I'm doing? Do I want to keep um, working at this job? Do I want to keep having this hobby? Um, and a lot of them are decisions that like one person kind of decides for themselves. Um, and your experiences speak more to uh, relational kind of decisions where other people have input. And so I think if we're going to talk about mindful closure, mindful endings, mindful completion, mindful failure, mindful whatever, <laughs> um, I think it would be interesting to kind of touch on each of those. What do you think? Yeah, I love I love that idea. Uh, which 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 should we touch on first? Well, why don't we keep going with the thread of like your relationships have multiple people then involved we, and multiple people decide this isn't working for us anymore. And then we can work our way down. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I loved uh, a couple weeks ago when you and I were first talking about this and a metaphor that you used that mm -hmm. I thought a lot about. Uh, <laughs> is yeah like like sex isn't very good when like one of the parties isn't really into it and and that's that's what you were beginning to feel with this podcast that yeah that there were there have been some of the episodes we've recorded when i just haven't been into it and you felt it you've been aware of it and it's and and it's because i haven't been and that's a hard thing to acknowledge. Uh, it's a it's it's a hard thing to notice in in somebody else. And it's well, a hard I don't think thing. that's true. I don't think it's hard to notice in somebody else. I no, think it's, it's a so hard thing. easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard thing to to for me at least it's a hard thing to acknowledge the noticing to really say okay this is real and not just okay i'm feeling this way but no they, like i i'm just that's just my insecurity or such and such uh for me it's hard for me to to say okay yeah this person isn't into it and my perception of that is accurate <laughs> um uh, it may, maybe that's not your experience, but that, that, that's not that my, experience. my experience. Okay. Okay. My experience is the opposite. My experience is I can tell immediately when somebody <laughs> is, is faking it. Right. I can tell immediately. And maybe that's like, I mean, I'm a, I'm a highly sensitive empath. Like I can tell, and yet you and I aren't even in the same fucking side of the country. And like, I can tell so much <laughs> less, like if I'm actually like getting sexy with somebody, like I know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I don't I don't necessarily always like call it out or I didn't when I was younger. 
but these mm -hmm. days I'm like, you know, it doesn't really feel like you're into this. So like, let's just not do this. And I, and this yeah. can be anything. This can be sex. This can be a podcast. This can be like going for a fucking hike, you know, like, right. I don't right. think the other person is into it. I am seething with like, uh, insecurity and like, I don't want to be here. And I feel like my body, like is vibrating in like a like a self-combust mm. kind of like because it makes me so uncomfortable to be with somebody who clearly doesn't want to be there mm. and for me it's obvious and I don't I'm getting yeah. to, to the point where I can call it out almost immediately good for you that's it's a hard. that's yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah it does it sounds hard it's that's that's something I right now am not great at at calling out or noticing and then the other side of it of actually owning when i'm not into something and to, because there's so many feelings of well i committed to this and i don't want to let this person down and i don't want to hurt their feelings and and am I just being a flake and like all these like self-shaming thoughts when, yeah. when I'm not into something anymore and, and yeah, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a good feeling, but a lot of those feelings that you feel like with somebody else, right. If you're with somebody and you're like, I'm not feeling this and the feelings of like shame and self gaslighting and like all of that stuff come up. Uh, they also come up when it's just you doing your own project and like not having right. other people around. So that's like a really, um, like universal experience in my experience, you know, if yeah. I'm working with somebody and I suddenly don't want to be there, I, well, I committed to this. I said that I would, I want to be a person who lives with integrity. So I want to do the things <laughs> I say I'm going to do. So these days I try to be a lot more selective with what I say I'm going to do, <laughs> or I will say it like, and give myself the opportunity to change my mind. Like, yes, I will commit to this now. I reserve the right to change my mind. Like something else may come up. I will do this as long as it's fun, like depending on what the situation is, but I will give myself an out so that I feel like I have it if I need it. And so that the other person like, isn't just blindsided by like, oh, I suddenly can't do this. I'm sorry. And like that happens. Right, and sometimes right, we have right. to step back. Sometimes we have to quit. Sometimes we have to fail. Sometimes we have to step away. And like, that's hard enough on its own. We don't need to make it harder by fucking bludgeoning ourselves to death. You know? A, a, <laughs> a uh, future topic idea. <laughs> <laughs> of the uh the interplay and balancing of integrity and authenticity mm. of I like i like in what in, well in what you were saying there there's a there's a there's a balance there they're not incompatible but they but they can tug in different directions sometimes of mm. of you were saying, okay, I want to be integ have integrity. I said I was going to do this thing, so I'm going to do this thing. And the authenticity of, yeah, I had every intention of doing this thing, and I am just not feeling it. And those can the like the the interplay of those can be can be challenging, and yeah. <laughs> and we can feel we can feel all sorts of of feels and shame and I, I loved your 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 phrase self gaslighting um, when those two things are seemingly in conflict between owning what we actually feel where we are in that moment and feeling that that inclination that desire to follow through with integrity on on something so they they conflict sometimes i sort of disagree with you oh good yay i disagree <laughs> with you on like probably more of a semantics level um, okay i think that one and this is something that i have worked with recently with my therapist is that for me integrity is one of my core values 
and being integrity, living in integrity is kind of a, it's a big concept, right? Like I want to live in integrity to you and to my dogs and to life in general, but ultimately the person that I need to be in integrity with is myself. And so if I do something, if I commit to something, I say, I'm going to do this, then I, I am extending integrity in a couple of different directions, but the core root needs to be integrity with myself. And so if I have said, I will do this Mm. thing. And then in the process of doing the thing, it falls out of alignment with my authentic self. Then I, I get the opportunity to investigate the situation and be like, okay, what is going to leave me in integrity with myself? I do not want to, this is something that I've done uh, for many years now, for about 32 years, (laughs) where I have uh, forfeited an integrity with myself to be in integrity with other people, which leaves me feeling run over, walked over, abandoned by myself and others. And so what I'm trying to do these days is maintain integrity with myself. And so if that means I have to disappoint somebody else and I have to break integrity with them to stay in integrity with me, I am staying in integrity with me. I am staying the the parent of myself, of all of the little units of me that live inside me. And I need to be taking care of them. And so I don't think that integrity and authenticity are inherently two different things. I think for me, the way I live my life and my core values, they're the same thing, but integrity has a lot of legs. I, I I love that so much. Like I'm like, (laughs) I'm almost in tears. (laughs) Oh, that's so good. Like the, oh, like, yeah. Like defining it that way of integrity of like the highest form of integrity is integrity to self then Mm -hmm. yeah integrity to self and authenticity are more or less one in the same and oh that's so yummy (laughs) oh that's something i gotta do some journaling on later yeah wow Wow. Mm. so curious to hear what the audience thinks about that um how do you feel integrity and authenticity intersect like does does anyone have other feels about it so let us know about that um but yeah in terms of like knowing when something isn't right for you knowing when you've committed to something that you need to uncommit to uh, i i think for me integrity is a huge piece of it i mean i have i have a list of questions that i'm happy to share Um, with the audience that I personally journal about because journaling is how I process. Um, So I would recommend journaling, but if journaling doesn't work for you, like go for a walk (laughs) uh, and think about it, meditate, um, make a piece of art, sing about it, make a song, talk to somebody. I mean, there's so many different ways you can process and self-therapize, but I do have like some questions that I can share with people that I ask myself when it comes to creative projects, work commitments, Um, even friend commitments, like, Hey, I said, I was going to go get tacos with you today, but I can't, I just can't do it. You know, and you got to figure out. Yeah. And I love that this, this kind of puts a little bit of a different spin and light on it to me of like this internal integrity. And I want to see those questions. I want to see those questions (laughs) like impatiently. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm happy to share them if we, if, if that's where we want to go um, now, for sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe let's, we, we don't need to like go into them necessarily, although we may, but if, you, if you've got them, let's, let's, let's hear them, spit them out. Yeah. Okay. So here are some of the questions that I ask myself when I'm considering quitting something or, uh, or, withdrawing my my commitment from um what would happen if i quit x thing first question what would happen if i continued x thing just like logistical questions how would i feel if i quit x thing how would i feel if i didn't quit x thing what do i need to change in order to feel better about sticking with x thing what do i need to change in order to feel better about quitting X thing. Why is quitting this thing so hard? What am I holding on to? 
what am I afraid of? Like, what, why am I so against quitting? Cause usually it's the quitting that is the hard part for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then there's also a balance between like, don't run at the first sign of trouble. Right. So like quitting is not always the answer. Like we're talking about quitting a lot today because quitting is harder for me than continuing with things. Um, but for some people, that's not true. Some people I know personally who are real good at quitting and not necessarily good at sticking through. So maybe we'll have a sticking through it episode, um, later, if that interests the audience, (laughs) just let me know. Uh, but yeah, if you're, if you're like me and you have a really hard time uncommitting to something, then those questions are a really good way to kind of work your way around, like figuring out what you actually want and why, because again, like the first couple of questions are like surface level questions. Like, how do I feel? What's going to happen? Like best case scenario, worst case scenario, whatever. But then the next questions get a little deeper and a little deeper and a little deeper and a little deeper. And you start getting into like the root cause of the symptoms. And the symptoms are usually discomfort, fear, uh, frustration, anxiety, things like that. But what is causing all of that? And so the questions are designed to kind of like bring you in, bring you down, get a little bit like deeper into what the actual issue is. Oh, yummy, 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 yummy. Thank you for sharing those. Uh, I, yeah, I I think I will use that tool um, of those questions in my life, um, hopefully with some frequency as I, (laughs) Not, not as I end lots and lots of things. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the point of the questions. Again, sometimes right, you right. Continue but to just to like self-examine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've used those questions with the podcast when I've been like, "Do I need to quit the podcast? Is it still serving me? What am I getting out of this?" Um, mm-hmm. And in those questions, you know, it's it's okay for your goals with whatever project or relationship or job or whatever to have changed. Maybe you started job relationship project, you know, because of, of this reason over here, but then as you've done it over time and you've learned or you've grown with somebody or whatever, your goals are allowed to shift. And so sometimes, you know, when I feel like I want to quit something, but I can't quit something, it's like, well, because I started this thing because of this thing. It's like, yeah, but that thing is, is not a thing anymore. So now you're worried about it from this right. perspective and that's okay. And so how do we make it work from your new goal? How do we make it work from where you are now, not where you were when you started? Mm. And so it's just, it's really just coming into alignment and being authentic and living with integrity with yourself. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Um, I like how you applied this as well to individual projects. I have definitely beat myself up um, about my, my not following through, my, my, my quitting writing at different times. And yeah, and like using, using these same tools, using the same mindful endings, Mm-hmm. Uh, perspective that I I feel like I've grown <laughs> with uh, some to have some level of adeptness uh, <laughs> partly through experience <laughs> uh, from a relational front uh, with with personal projects with things that are just up to me uh, that's yeah I don't think that I've I've tried looking at it through the same lens. And I, I, I appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, I use it mostly with personal projects because I am currently single and I do a lot of things alone and I work alone and a lot of things I do are just by me for me. And so I'm looking forward to being able to like apply these in other realms as well. I mean, I've gotten to apply them in like friendships and stuff is a still fulfilling for me or, you know, trying to date people. It's like, this isn't going anywhere. (laughs) Um, Why don't we touch a little bit on uh, one-sided relational endings? Because we said that we would, and I think it's important to be like, this thing came to an end. I didn't expect it. I didn't want it, but here I am. 
now I gotta fucking deal with it and it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I that's hard. Uh, yeah, they, it is. I, and it and it's not one it's not one I have a lot of experience with. Mm-hmm. Um I feel like in one sense, my divorces, uh, plural, uh, have have been one sided, but I feel that they were one sided, mostly. Well, <laughs> this is a judgment, but I think it mm-hmm. might be an accurate judgment, uh, partly because of my cowardice of me knowing it wasn't the right fit, but me not being able largely with religious contexts and whatnot to be the one to say, Hey, this isn't working. Um, partly because there were the, the consequences of saying that in that religious context would have been, uh, very severe. And I, I ended up going through those consequences anyhow, uh, <laughs> just kicking and screaming um uh but the i think that goes back to what you said earlier about like being able to see that the other person isn't into it or knowing that you're the person who's not into it and just not acknowledging it and right like, digging your heels in and being like nope 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 i will not <laughs> i will not right. acknowledge this as fact right I, and i feel like more recently like my my relationships have had a level of communication where when it's not working and when something's not working for either of us and, and fostering a level of trust that we can talk about that and acknowledge that and, and, yeah. and thus come to that mutual painful as it may still be that mutual parting. Um, but there in friendships, there have been there have been more occasions with friendships where I have just determined that you know what this isn't the type of friendship I need in my life um, this this person the the way that they interact with me is is something that just increases my my sense of not enoughness i reached a point where i was like you know what no i like i i had asked both of them to stop and it had persisted and so i was like you know what no this is this has got to go and so in both cases i uh told them that yeah this is this is continued. I'm not welcoming this in my life, and I need to I need to end this friendship. And like hard, but it was it was what I needed for my own health and well being. And since then, without those voices in my life, I have been able to embrace myself and and. Mm-hmm. So that's that's from like a a friendship perspective. Yeah, what what's what's your what's your take on on the one-sidedness? Um I think that you know to to kind of turn the lens around from you know being the one who has decided that this isn't working for me anymore. I have a lot of experience in that. I have a ton of experience being like, this doesn't work. (laughs) I'm not doing this anymore Yeah. in like romantic and platonic and career and all of that. Um, And it is harder for me to be on the receiving end of somebody else being like, this isn't working anymore. And I have unilaterally decided that this is over. Um, That is a huge friggin' challenge for me because it does, that is like a bomb of inadequacy and unworthiness and not enoughness right when somebody <sighs> somebody else says like right, right like you you're thinking like this is chugging right along everything is great we're on the same page we have com- good communication everything is awesome i'm doing everything in my power and then they just like fucking knock you over with a with a no <laughs> this isn't working 
Um, and you know, that can be really devastating and it can definitely make you question everything that you've ever done and like make, like really rip your self-trust into shreds. Like, oh, I thought this was fine. I thought this was going the distance. I thought this was, I thought we were communicating well. I thought we were like putting blocks on the wall to build a good foundation. And this other person right. thought like every block I thought we were putting on, this person thought we were taking down. And that's not something you can know unless Ooh. you communicate about it. <laughs> um, and so I thought, I thought things were one way. He thought things were the other way. And, you know, he ended our relationship and that was really, really painful, really awful, really not something I wanted to experience. And yet I got to. And so dealing with that, with, you know, forced endings, you can be mindful about it, you know, retroactively, because you weren't the one who decided that it was going to end, but you do get to decide how you move forward. And, you know, the first thing to do is to just feel your feels, right? Like you, your process was getting pretty drunk, making a container to have big feelings and letting the big feelings out. My process was finding a hike nearby that would kick my ass. <laughs> and I went and did that. And like, um, but I just like had to move my body and like had to get out. And like, it didn't feel good. It didn't get better. It wasn't like, I'm going to go find this hike that is going to kick my ass. And then I'm going to, and then I'm going to process everything and I'm going to be great. Like that right, didn't right. happen, but it was better than like festering in my feelings and like not doing anything else. And so, you know, dealing like that was within 24 hours of, of all of the shit hitting the fan. And it took me weeks, months, you know, to be able to like function again. Um, but one thing there were, I guess there were two things really that kind of kept me going, which I, I hate that phrase. Um, there were two things that I tried to keep in mind. And one of them was that, you know, the universe will keep breaking your heart until it stays open. And so I don't think my heart has gone back to the way it was before. And I do think that it has been so much more open ever since. So that doesn't mean that the universe is not going to keep breaking it. That bitch is going to keep breaking it. But that was definitely a thing. Like, all right, the universe is going to keep breaking your heart until it stays open. So keep it open. So that was like, a, that was a goal. Like, don't close up, don't close up, don't put up walls don't shut down. Cause these are things that I do. I'm really good at building walls. I'm really good at shutting down and like putting up, you know, a big piece of armor. One of my friends in college, I'll never forget this. It was so funny at the time. And like, it's still kind of funny, but also a little sad. He's like, you're like a giant teddy bear all wrapped up in barbed wire. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, I hope you guys are watching the video right now because Fierce is losing it. <laughs> oh, oh my goddess. Oh, that was like, like so much close to a spit take. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they, a big teddy bear all wrapped up in barbed wire. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. So like, I'm really good at having something happen that I don't want to have happen, having my feelings hurt, having my heart broken, having whatever, and then just like porcupining, right? Like just being like, no one's ever coming near me again. And so this time I was like, okay, like if you do nothing else, if you don't, if you don't even have to eat and like, I didn't eat for like a week. And like, you don't have to do anything today, but not close up. All you have to do is not close up and shut down and put up walls. All you have to do today, <sighs> stay open, stay open, stay open. And like, also if I closed up, all those feelings are trapped. If I stay open, right. they can flow. Right. They can just keep going. Yes. They can keep going. And I got to like, try not to ruminate also. <laughs> uh, so the that was best, like- <laughs> on, on, on that real quick, the best description I have ever heard for emotions is the E stands for energy and it is energy in motion. And yeah, and it has to be in motion to be felt. 
And if we try to stop that motion, then all we're doing is just building up a dam for it to build up behind to then be released in a potentially much more volatile way. Uh, that somebody who doesn't deserve it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So that was the that was the first of two things was just like stay open, stay open, stay oh, do whatever it takes to stay open and not close up. And then the second thing was like, okay, cool. So life as I knew it will never be as I thought it was going to be. I thought my entire future was planned out to an extent, right? I didn't know what we were going to do. Story breaking. I didn't know what we were going to do. I didn't know where we were going to go. I didn't know, but I knew that it was going to be with this person and that we were going to make it work together as a unit. And then suddenly it was like, fuck what? Like I lost, I lost a best friend. I lost a partner. I lost, I lost so many things in the person, but I also lost my future. I lost my concept of what my future would be. I lost everything. And so then I had to be like, so I was grieving the person and the relationship and, and everything else, but I was grieving my future. And I was like, what am I going to do now? And then, so then I had to be like, okay, well, I can do whatever I want. I don't know what I want, but I can do whatever it is. Right. <laughs> so and right. it was like trying to like, kind of like let myself, let myself play, let myself get creative, let myself like, okay, well, if I can do whatever I want, what do I want? I could get really playful. I could like channel my inner Brianna Media and be like, what does what do single ladies with dogs want to do? <laughs> um, how much fun do I want to have? Where do I want to go? Like, what do I want to do with my time? I did learn a lot of things from it because it was so like internally devastating. And so, yeah, those were the, the two major things that really got me through. Um, keep your heart open and you can make life whatever you want to be now. Uh, and so I, I never so would have beautiful. guessed... I never would have guessed six months ago, like four months ago, three months ago, I would have, because now I've been living in the house for almost three months, but I never would have guessed that this would be my life. I never would have guessed that I would have ended up in Arizona. I never would have guessed that I would have gotten off the road. I never would have guessed any of that shit, but I was just going by like, this feels good. Do this. That doesn't feel good. Don't do that. This feels good. Do this. I have a curiosity here. Let's go there. Let's see what that, what happens in that area of life. And now like I'm the happiest I've been easily in months, Uh, probably in years, maybe my whole life. It's amazing. That's so, (laughs) oh, Man, I'm saying fuck a lot on this episode. That is so fucking awesome. <laughs> Usually I'm, I'm the one who drops out the F-bombs. <laughs> you, er, earlier, when you, when you started, you said like I that you didn't expect to experience that, but you got to. Mm-hmm. With your word choice there, yeah. really stood out to me that here what is it nine months out uh, like that that you're able to use that word choice that you got to experience that of having having an ending that you didn't have any say in choosing and and what you've been able to do with that of like practicing going through the crucible of practicing staying open, staying, letting that energy be in motion, letting yourself feel the really big feels, letting the stories break, letting yourself play and find again what it is that you want and that what it is that is alive to you and where that's taken you ah that is so fucking beautiful (laughs) Ah. yeah and i think that perspective is everything and word choice is everything um i'm a writer though so like my opinion is biased but even if you don't feel like this is an opportunity i get to do this thing when you're in it it doesn't feel like that it feels like fucking terrible um, no, no. but it, even if in that moment you're like i get to experience this i get to this is this is an opportunity for me even if you don't believe it 
your subconscious mind doesn't know that. And so your subconscious mind will be like, okay, cool. We're cool. How do we make this a benefit? Like, what are we, what are we doing here? Um, so I think that word choice is really, really important. Hmm. I think that a lot of things need to end a lot more than people allow them to. I think that, um, you know, we need to quit more things than we quit, whether that's a relationship, a job, a hobby, a passion project, whatever. Um, and people don't for mm-hmm. fear of feeling like a failure, for fear of feeling like a quitter, for all the shame that we heap on top of ourselves. Um, but also, like, nature has seasons and everything has its time. And, you know, dead things help, new things come to life, and it's all compost. And so the more things you can kill off, the better. <laughs> so that's what I think. <laughs> there was. Uh, this was probably 10, 12 years ago. I was reading a novel by Wendell Berry. The, there was a line, and this might not even be a direct quote, but the way it stood out to me was there was this line in this book that said something to the effect of, it was a beautiful thing that ended. And just that recognition that yes just because it ends doesn't take away from the beauty that was and the beauty that 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 thing that was has and that that quote has really that sentiment has really stayed with me (laughs) yeah one thing that um one of my favorite podcasters says all the time um dan savage the savage love cast if you're not listening to it you definitely should be um but he does uh, a sex and relationship advice podcast and column he's been doing it forever and he's wonderful but he always says that just because a relationship ended doesn't mean it failed doesn't mean it was a failure. yes if you learned anything from it at any point if you had fun at any point like it wasn't a failure just because it ended doesn't mean it was a failure. And so I think that that's a sentiment we can take into all aspects of our lives. Like just because you will not be on the podcast as a co-host anymore, does not mean that this experiment was a failure. And not I at all. The fact that we are walking away from it, both feeling like fulfilled and right. And like our relationship, our friendship has not been changed for the worse and it's like oh i don't i hate beers i don't want to talk to him anymore no it's just like we tried this thing it was an experiment it worked for a while it doesn't work now cool like let's end it before it gets to the point where we hate yes. each other right yes and so I, I i think that that's one of the biggest things that i want to encourage our listeners to do and to increasingly learn how to do myself is to mindfully recognize when something needs to shift when something needs to end and to bravely boldly confidently proactively step, proactively step into that uh, before before that bitterness and that woundedness uh, becomes all that there is yeah i completely agree proactive quitting helps prevent but does not always prevent you know resentment and toxic feelings and vitriol and pain um but it can help make the best of a bad situation and it can at least leave some boards for a bridge to be rebuilt yeah yeah so (laughs) all right longest episode thank you so much beers (laughs) (laughs) It has been an absolute pleasure. I have absolutely, truly, truly (laughs) loved getting to be a part of this podcast, getting to co-host it for these months. And I'm excited for our continued friendship. And I look forward to hopefully getting to uh, be a part of future episodes from now, from once, well, every once in a while. (laughs) Absolutely. And so uh, obviously, thank you so much to Beers for being a part of the show for the last few months. And thank you, of course, to our listeners and our viewers. 
Um, I would not still be producing the show if it weren't for you guys. So thank you so very much. If you haven't heard already, if you haven't seen, I have started producing rapid fire question mini-sodes on our podcast Patreon page, patreon.com slash deliberate living. And uh, on those, it's just short little quick fun conversations with some of our previous guests about uh, like fun questions, like how everybody likes their PB and J, because that is something that I am really curious about. Um, yeah, I need all, to do one of these. Yeah, <laughs> all the answers. I have, I have opinions. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, all the answers so far to that particular question have been really interesting. So if you want to uh, to see those and to hear the answers to those questions. And also if you want to hear the entirety of the conversation that Beers and I had today about mindful ending and mindful quitting, that will also be on the podcast Patreon as well. I am just posting a miniature version of it here for everybody else for the public. It got pretty long, but deep and it's all good stuff. So we're just gonna do the extra long episode on the Patreon page, which we will continue to do in the future. Um, so if you haven't already subscribe to the show, do the like, the subscribe, the thumbs up, five stars, leave us a review, do all the things that help the algorithms see us share this episode with somebody who might be going through a hard time right now, or, um, you know, share the questions to ask yourself when you're thinking about quitting something, uh, use them yourself, share them with others and let us know how, our conversation and how our tips have impacted your lives. We really appreciate it. The feedback from you guys truly is the greatest thing on the planet. So uh, tune in next week for another excellent episode. Bye. Hi for now. <laughs>